pain in the bottom. I've had to undo or at least take all this paint off around the edges and re-weld uh, re it. It's had to be seam welded all the way around um, because the plug welding wasn't enough. It's plug welded every inch or so, um, but it's also got weld all around the top of it as well now. Also done up in here, well, we can't see there, all up in there where it's been welded from the bottom. And of course, these patches have all been welded in here now, so that's really, really solid. You can't get a screwdriver through that now. Um, so we just got to start using seam seal in here. Also welded a couple of 5 16 coarse nuts in there uh, for the radiator, for the new radiator support. Oh, good work. Did it take all that paint off there? Did it take all that paint off? Yeah, I did. Cool. I've got to take that off anyway. I was going to sand it off. It might be a bit better stuck in some areas. Pardon? It might be better stuck in some areas than others. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that was But it's, good. um... I'm just cleaning the body up now. It's... It's getting there, it's nearly ready to do some paint prep. Yeah, I'm meeting time out, but I love those. Um, gave it a really, really good tub. That was as clean as a whistle. It doesn't look much different. It doesn't look probably much different on a camera, but to the naked eye, there's a hell of a difference. Even steam cleaned all the paint off, all that black that was there before. There's still little remnants of it around, but it's sort of at a stage where now, stage now where I can um, really start doing some prep and start the paint process, even clean up behind the dash. Just hose the whole thing with a high pressure cleaner to make it nice and clean. All right, now comes the laborious task of starting to, to rub back in preparation for paint. Now, all this paint here is quite stable, so we can leave that on and prime over it. Um, the last person that painted this just painted through the, um, through the scuttle tray, and that's a dodgy, that's a, a crap bit of work, that, so that's all gonna come off. Uh, what's interesting about this car, I've started rubbing the shocker towers, and there's virtually just primer there. There was no actual color. Um, so when the car was painted at the factory, the, the robots or the people that were painting it didn't reach around here. Um, and the same on the other side, and it's funny because the XD, my XD for Elkins is the same, so they were doing the same sort of painting in 1979 as to what they were doing in 1969. While I'm at it, I've just sort of poured 15 in here, there's a seam in there, I put seam seal on. All around these areas here now, this car wasn't in very good condition, but rust-wise it wasn't bad at all. Now, what that's attributed to is this thing has spent a lot of time outside, uh, but not under trees. Trees will kill a car, and the reason for that is uh, not just water, but leaves and all these sorts of things can come in through these vents, and they'll sit in the plenum and rust them out all along here. Now, the problem is there's a, there's a, a sort of a false panel here, and all of the stuff that's in your plenum chamber, all your, all your water will drain out through here and sit behind the guard. Now... The reason we get sill rust is because all of these leaves and all this debris sort of sits trapped by the bottom of the guard here and rusts out your sill area. And this was clear as a whistle, so that's really good. So as a protectant, I've pour 15 all around the sill. I'll do up here as well. I've run out of the stuff. I don't want to put too much deadener. There's a bit of deadener there left. I'll take that off. The rest of this is pretty clean. I've also uh, cleaned up behind the shocker. Now, I know on the 116 1970s S-Class Mercedes-Benz, they have a lot of this sort of stuff, all up here, and they always look in good condition until you get a screwdriver and whack them through. And quite often the deadener will stay solid, but the metal behind it will rust. It does hold a lot of moisture behind there. So where I put deadener, I'm going to have pour 15 underneath, just to protect the metal, and the deadener will act to sort of quieten things down when stones come off the wheel. I'm just sort of going back over with a bit of brush on deadener. Now, a lot of people butt weld these floors and the Victorian code says they have to be overlapped. I think 25 millimeter was the measurement. So butt welding looks very neat, but if it's not to code, it's no good. And it's something important that we make it look better from underneath than on top, because that's where the uh, 
examiner's will say it. Right where the examiner's say it. I'm just going out with a bit of brush on dead near and after I've done this, or a bit later when I get it, I suppose, I'll put the spray on stuff right away and I'll plant the under here. But it just has to look bright, otherwise, you get yourself in a strife. This is gooey, tarry sort of stuff, but I'm brushing it back into the seam, if you know what I mean. So the seam's here, and I'm brushing it into here and then I'll go over the whole thing and that'll neaten it up and make it look a lot more um, sort of finished off than what it does now. Now before I go anywhere near this car with any paint I have to sort of dummy fit a few bits and pieces and one of them is the radiator. I'm changing the radiator um, to a large GT type one now. The brackets mount very differently. The six cylinder radiator mounts to the um, radiator support in the 302 one as well. These ones are a bit different though. And Ford in their wisdom of sort of given us pilot holes there for these brackets to fit and I just have to open them up a bit I'm just going to use quarter inch and that bracket will also serve the other side as well just here so I'm just going to open these holes up a little bit so I can bolt that in. I always buy bolt packs of bolts these are quarter inch fine grade 5 hardened uh, because I've done a lot of British car stuff that's pretty much what they use not correct for this car but I don't give a rat's. Um, another good thing to get is a drill gauge now they'll, the quarter inch obviously fit in the quarter inch hole, I'd make them a little bit bigger, 1764 is probably a good size. And so I'll take them out with that. This side, wasn't it? Just button those up from underneath. I was going to use my brother's Mustang GT radiator. It was originally a big block um, radiator, but it was 30 mil too short. I got this lovely unused one, struck gold, got it for 220 bucks from a lovely, a lovely fellow down in uh, Hopper's Crossing. So I've set that in place. And this little guy goes over, this looks like it all fits quite well. And you can be anal and use the right bolts. These are actually plated zinc bolts that I had sent out from the United States. The Galaxy, the 516 of course, the same as what we use here. I'll get the proper ones, I think. Um, these were a pack of 25, were under, were $12 American at the time, the Australian dollar was up. I think under 20 bucks Australian, got them posted out and everything for 25 of them, so it was a lot cheaper than buying them here. Uh, this radiator, I'll give it a, a paint job, but it's never actually been used but it looks like it fits quite well um, and I've made those uh, holes down the bottom for it the difference between a 6 cylinder and 302 one is this area here and quite often the factory radiator support cutouts are sort of quite rough now if I do cut this out I'll sculpt it around here and make it really really tidy I haven't made up my mind whether I'm going to bother whether or not I'm going to bother cutting that though but that looks pretty good Love a cup of tea. When I was at uni I used to drink about eight cups of coffee a day. Now I'm on about four cups of tea. Absolutely love the stuff. I don't need to talk about that though. I'm going to talk about these. Now, the door trims I bought a theme on and they've got a wood grain sort of strip along them and I wanted to continue that theme along here. There's a hole there. I haven't bothered filling that in because that's going to get covered anyway. Now, you can't put the wood grain in without putting these bottom padded sections in. And because this is the original glove box and it's nice and clean and all that sort of thing, I didn't exactly know where they mounted because um, if you get them a bit out, it could look very, very wrong. So, I bought this rather manky looking glove box lid. It's fair model or fair, I don't know what it is. I've got to repaint it all. But it's got the right holes in the right spot so that these padded areas fit on and they are on a slot sort of thing but I can see roughly where they go um, or I can see exactly where they go these ones here are sort of turned down they've sagged at the edges so I can heat them up with the heat gun I hope and sort of get them you know fixed again but by mounting this glove box door in and this padded section on I can see exactly where these bits go there's the side bit there and there's sort of a radius there it's got a bit of a lip on it but I'll be able to determine exactly where they go and this one here goes and then I can repaint the dash because this is 
XW saddle. It's a baby poo type colour. It's a bit different from what the XY's had. But um, I can't do any painting until I sort of fit this stuff up and, um, and drill holes and dummy fit it all. In the meantime, I'm going to finish this. Mm. Yum. And yum. Love it. It's going to be hard seeing exactly how this goes until I get the wood. I think the wood will close up a bit of that gap, but it's sort of falling away at the edges. I'm um, using a heat gun to heat it up, but you don't want to burn it because you can't get these things anymore. I'll put it up here so you can see what I'm doing. And sort of, it makes the foam a lot more pliable, but I've just got to be really, really careful with these. Here we go. I'm going to pull it over a bit like that. I don't want it to gather at the front though. So I'll just let that cool a bit. But it's already starting to take up. I think it's just because of the heat in the car with sun. Ooh, let's pull this over. And that's already a lot better than what it was. Still not there yet really. I mean it does have to be recolored but you can see now it's pretty much a straight line whereas before it was sort of sag pretty badly at both sides but I'll leave that like that until I put the wood grain in and then I'll have a better idea because the wood grain's got like a chrome bezel there so it might shut some of that up a little bit but at least then I can get an idea where these side bits go. that's on that'll be nicely light. I can line that up beautifully that's good so I've got to do this one right here now and then I know that's all good it looks better from here actually from where the camera is it probably doesn't but once I've bent that in I'll reshape that I can have that nicely lined up and I'll recolor these as well in the proper saddle but that looks good these lines here are lining up I'm happy with that let's go do this one now well, we're almost ready to start doing a little bit of painting. Uh, the roof has lots and lots of little dents on it. Now, I'm going to have to pull this one out. That's quite a large one. Some of these dents are only about a millimetre deep, and I'm just going to fill them. Now, the best way to tackle this is to um, get it back to bare metal and put a 408 two-pack epoxy on it. And what that'll do is it'll completely seal the metal, and then we can use filler over it, and then another coat of 408. Now, the problem with that is it's highly toxic and I'm a handyman guy working in his garage so I can't afford to do that. I can't use two-pack products in here. They're just too poisonous. So I'm going to do a little bit of filler on the bare metal. Now they reckon that's alright for 10 to 15 years. This car is always going to stay inside anyway. Now in these sorts of areas here, this is where the turrets joined uh, to the C-pillar. These were uh, originally lead filled. Now the thing that worries me about that, and I'm very competent with soldering and all that sort of stuff, so the idea of heating it up and putting a bit of lead in there is not a big deal for me, but I am worried about the flux um, and residue of acid underneath the surface of the paint and filler and rust forming. I'm not experienced with that and I don't really know what I'm doing with it. So I'm going to use a metal filler and I spoke to an old school panel beater about that. Not normal plastic filler, it's, it's, it's a metal filler and I can fill that in then have a very light skim of plastic over the top. Now people don't like bog or bondo you know they're always going oh it's got bog on it all that sort of stuff there's nothing wrong with it at all as long as uh, you don't have it over a quarter of an inch thick the thickest I have it is an eighth of an inch I like to use it a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch thick and then it's fine it's all right it's stable now the reason you can't put filler over a single pack edge like this this is a single pack product it's not as stable as a two pack product and filler is a two pack product so it has to go on the bare metal and then of course I'm going to etch the whole thing again and um, then I can start priming it using a high fill. Ugh, what a mess. Check this out. There is bog dust absolutely everywhere. It's just a pain in the neck. Oops. All this sanding 
because I can't get the stupid roof straight. This is my second attempt, actually it's my third attempt, and I'm having a bit of trouble because there were so many dents, there's actually 74 of them in there. I thought there were 60, I'd have found a few others. Whenever there's a dent, the surrounding metal apparently tends to wave up, so I've been banging and filling, banging and filling. I've just filled the whole thing in um, with a skim of filler. There's a couple of um, the fine fill things there. If you used uh, the, um, I'll get up here. There's a few lows in there and this sort of thing. So I've filled in a few. Um, but this is a two pack fine filler. So I'm having a rotten time. And I really wanted to get the car painted by Easter. This is the uh, inside of the bottom of the old cross member, the engine cross member. And uh, the six cylinder, and apparently the 302 had a, a flat steel one like this, or at least this was flat years ago, it's buckled now. I wasn't happy with it, so I put this um, 351 GT type one in. Um, that's all sort of been plug welded, so that's nice and strong. That looks the business, doesn't it? Now there's three types of filler going into this car. I'm going to use a stainless steel filler, a metallic filler if you like, for this area here. I don't want a big, thick um, area of filler there. And the reason for that um, is of course it can break down if it's over a quarter of an inch thick. I don't really like using even a quarter of an inch. But anyway, you don't sand and, and reuse this metal filler. Um, you would put a, a skim of plastic filler over the top of it. Um, now the plastic filler is just the conventional stuff. This is the stuff here, I don't know if you can see that, body soft. This is great stuff, the yellow stuff. Um, sands easily and it's really, really good, of course. You mix it 1 in 50 with the uh, hardener. The other types, of course, for finishing off, little pock marks and so forth. You can use these single pack, um, what do you call it, quick stop putty type things, but these have a tendency to shrink back. Um, the stuff I've been using is this. This is absolutely brilliant. It's a two pack, or a two pack if you like, fine filler. Sands beautifully. Um, dries a lot quicker and it doesn't shrink back. That's absolutely marvellous, that stuff. Um, but for now, we'll get going on this thing. And this is just the same as any other filler. I don't know if we can see there. Can we see there? No, we can't. I might just lower the camera a bit. This is the same as any other filler where you would mix one in 50. I'm just going to guess that it's there. And we have to mix it up. We don't want to see any streaks at all. Now this is full of stainless steel, this stuff. And an old school panel beater told me to use this rather than lead filling because he had the same um, worries, if you like, that I did with um, with using, you know, fluxes which aren't washed off or cleaned off properly underneath and cause rust later on. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to use this. This is going to go off because it's reasonably warm today. I'm in a t-shirt. And we, now we don't want this to be the final coat, we just want this to fill in that void nicely. So I'm going to sort of squeeze it in there. But I was recommended this, and there are a lot of blokes that are purists that would prefer to lead fill, but when you're working at your garage at home like me, you know, and you have limited experience with that. I reckon the safest way is to go with what an old school beater told me and just use this stuff. So that's what it looks like done. Now we can lay a skim of um, plastic over it. This stuff is almost too hot to touch. It is ridiculously hot. All the seam sealing's done in these areas. You can't see for all the dust in here, but that's all seam sealed along there. <laughs> see? Um, looking really, really, really good. So, um, particularly the roof. I'm, I think I might hit a home run with this roof, I reckon. I reckon I might be on the home straight with that. A bit of fettling with it still. But I tell you what, after 74 bloody dents in there, I reckon I might have it. Little odds and ends like this have to be filled in. Can you see that there? Um, but a lot of these dents, or some of these dents, I, um, I could tap out. Other ones were sort of behind cross members and bits and pieces in the roof and I couldn't get to the back of them. Just going around looking for imperfections. There's some here. I've just put pencil line where some of them are. That's just an insect. 
this one there. Um, it's not looking too bad though. I dare say there's a lot more. There's one there. This is a bug going for a walk. That'll rub out. So, getting there I guess. So, next video, I'll finish up all the filling and we'll start putting it in paint. See you later.